Teenager, I worked in a restaurant called Mountain Jack's. It was a really nice steakhouse and I was a prep cook so I prepared all the food to be cooked by the line cooks like making the soups and the sauces, dicing vegetables up. Seasoning steaks was a big part of it too. There was one time I was standing next to the chef and we were working together on wrapping these seasoned steaks in some plastic wrap and I couldn't reach the box so I reached under the chef's arms and pulled the box wrap through but I dragged the serrated edge used for cutting the wrap across the underside of his arm slicing it open and he winced in pain and he gave me a look that was like really you just did that and then he held up his arm and like blood was flowing down and I tell you I felt really dumb I felt guilty I felt stupid I felt really sorry now he went and cleaned himself up and he forgave me. But man, every time I saw that bandaged arm, I still felt really stupid for a long time. Now Christ reveals his wounds to the disciples today, but they rejoice. And I want to know why. Well, let's kind of reset the scene so that we know what's going on here. We're in John 20. The disciples made a journey towards Jerusalem to seize the throne. And they believe that Christ is the promised Messiah, and they've attached all their cultural and religious expectations on to what that could mean. And they believe that Christ is going to clean up all the political and religious systems that are corrupt to the core, and then dole out God's judgment upon the evil Roman Empire that occupies their home. But Jesus keeps talking about he has to go and die at the hands of the very systems that they expect him to overcome and overthrow. None of it actually makes any sense to them. So Christ willingly walked into the hands of his enemy and died. That was just like 48 hours ago in this narrative. So now it's Sunday evening. The women disciples have said something about seeing Christ risen from the dead because they're the ones who have the courage to leave the house and visit Christ's tomb. And then all the men disciples are hiding in, these, in this place with like locked doors in fear. Now things outside have not calmed down yet from the whole weekend's turmoil. And then Jesus is just like standing there among them, saying, peace to you. Like, really? Roman soldiers are patrolling the streets and angry mobs still hot and bothered. The religious authorities are probably still on the lookout for Jesus' followers, you know, trying to stir things up again. And Jesus says, peace to you. It kind of sounds like that situation where you're like, hey, calm down. And then you don't calm down. It just gets you all riled up again. What kind of peace is even available in a moment like this? And then he shows off his wounds on his hands and his side where he got the spear in there. Why? Maybe it's to show them that his humanity is still here so they know that this is the same man who hung on the cross a few days earlier. So this means that what Jesus said was true. Human evil wasn't stronger than divine love and humility. Could be that, maybe. but. Maybe also to that, Christ shows them their failure. See, most of these men abandoned Christ in his hour of need, just before the crucifixion. You know, they were all like, we're going to go and die with him earlier in this book. But they expected to go down in this glorious battle, not walking willingly into the clutches of their enemies. And now Christ shows off his wounds. But not to make them ashamed, they rejoice when they see the wounds. And I had to ask why. They now see firsthand that their failures did not lead to the end of their Messiah and God's mission. Not only did Christ overcome their failures, but he proved that all of his teachings were true. He took all of the human evil that we could conjure up, he absorbed it all into his being and it killed him. But he walked through death unscathed and now stands before them alive bearing the marks of his death for them to see now the way of christ is a non-violent love that seeks justice and now this has been proven true and more powerful than evil and power 
Now, their failures were not powerful enough to divert God's end of love and justice for the world. So this moment feels like forgiveness and redemption and hope, bigger than their ability or inability to be faithful, powerful, or successful. Somehow, Christ's resurrection transcends them and yet includes them.